Now one important concept in game programming is the idea of collision detection, or basically determining when two game objects touch each other. And there's a variety of different ways that we can do collision detection. You can get very advanced in the way that you detect that two objects have touched each other, but we're going to do a very simple version of collision detection called bounding box collision detection. So in our problem here, we have a paddle and we have a ball. And we need to know when the ball touches the paddle so we can reflect the ball off of the paddle. So what we can do here is we can give each one of these game objects a bounding box. And this bounding box is going to define the boundaries roughly of the object. So for example, with our paddle, it is pretty much going to be the exact shape of the paddle. With the ball, we're ending up having a little bit of a bigger bounding box than really what the ball is because we're using rectangles here. Now we could use a circle and we could do all kinds of complex ways of detecting the bounding box for shapes, but in this case we're just going to use rectangles because that's a simple implementation. And it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. For our simple game here, this rectangle is going to be a good approximation. So the way that we're going to calculate the bounding box is we're basically going to just take the image itself and that's going to be the box because remember the image is going to be a rectangle. So once we have our bounding boxes, all we're going to do is we're going to do some simple calculation to determine whether or not two rectangles intersect. And in fact, the rectangle class in the XNA API in Monogame has an intersect method that we're going to use and we can just tell if these two things intersect. If they intersect, then there's a collision, and then we can respond appropriately. And in this case, it would be to reflect the ball off of the paddle. So let's go ahead and start off by implementing our bounding box inside of our sprite class, because all of our game objects are going to need to have this concept of a bounding box. It's a real simple implementation. All we're going to do is create a public property here, and we're going to call this bounding box. It'll be of type rectangle. So we'll do a bounding box and we just need a getter on here we don't need someone to be able to set this and we're just going to return a new rectangle and the x value and y value are going to be our location dot x and our location dot y and then for the width we're just going to use our width and for our height we're going to use our height and we need to cast these to integers because rectangles take integers so there's our rectangle so now all of our game objects are going to have this bounding box. So now if we go into our ball and we need to modify this update. So what we want to do is if we're not attached to a paddle, then we need to go ahead and check to see if we've hit one of the paddles. We don't need to check it if we're already attached to a paddle. So let's go ahead and put an else here. So if we're not attached to a paddle, then what we're going to do is let's check the bounding box. So let's say our bounding box dot intersects. We'll put this in an if condition. So if our bounding box dot intersects, and we'll say game objects dot player paddle dot bounding box, or bounding box dot intersects game objects dot computer paddle. In either one of these cases, we are going to want to reflect and make sure we get the bounding box here. So if we hit either paddle, the way that we're going to reflect is we're simply going to change our velocity to go the other direction. So we're going to say our velocity equals new vector 2. And for our x velocity, it's just going to be an inversion of what we had before. So we'll say velocity negative velocity.x. And then our y value is going to remain the same. So we're just going to use our velocity.y. So now let's go ahead and run this and take a look at what we've got here. So now if we let the ball fly, you can see the computer hits the ball, it bounces off, and we can hit the ball back as well. And this isn't going to be perfect at this point. If we slice the ball, which is a little bit hard to do, if, if we had the ball come across here and we hit it here, we would end up going the wrong direction. So this is a good challenge perhaps to try to implement, try to think of a way that you could solve this problem by perhaps moving the ball or doing something else 
or maybe having a little bit different behavior if it's on the left or right side. 